The content you are about to watch is meant for thought and consideration. Please be respectful of each other and opinions shared. This is a safe space to express thoughts, ideas, and information. The views and opinions expressed by individuals in the following program do not necessarily reflect those of every speaker of the IMAC organization or its affiliates. P.S. The Mandela Effect is real. And welcome back. <laughs> so glad to see you again. We're now finishing the first day of the International Mandela Effect Conference with a panel. And joining us now is Shane of Unbiased and on the Fence. This is Shane Robinson joining us. Hello, everybody. Um, the, yeah. <laughs> and I, I think of Shane as the heart of IMEC. So really glad to have you here. And the rest of us, you've seen, if you've been watching all of the presentations today, my co-moderator today back. is so Christopher Anatra. And uh, we've also got a Kronos Mago, who gave a brilliant presentation about uh, this data stream uh, application. And of course, our own brilliant father of IMEC, Jerry Hicks. So the first question, I don't know who wants to take it, I'll read it, and then if anybody wants to jump in, go ahead. Question is, this is from 2020 website, if the Mandela effect is meant to raise consciousness for the world, what happens if the majority of the world never awakens to it? That's if the Mandela effect is meant to raise consciousness for the world. What happens if the majority of the world never awakens to it? I can, I can start with that. Um, okay. One of the things that I, that I talk about is the concept of a wake-up date, which means that you know, as individuals, our higher consciousness has, let's say, set a date, like an expiration date or something like that, about when the right time is for us to wake up. For some of us, it's been a while ago. For some of us, it might be now. Um, for some of us, it might be into the future. And I think that as much as we might try to wake someone up, um, it just, you know, they'll walk away. They're just, they're just, whatever happens, they're just not ready for it at that time. But we also have other things going on like everything that's going, everything we see around mm -hmm. us that we could have never predicted this year, right? The, the whole virus situation, mm -hmm. protests, riots, we'll see what's next. I'm sure there's more things that are be, gonna be coming that are, that are really starting to force people into um, going into that um, awakening, raising of consciousness. So I believe things are accelerating. How we each, Deal with it as an individual is an individual choice and should not be judged. If someone is not ready to be woken up, like that's fine. Uh, but when someone is, they're going to be attracted to places like us and like these, these panel discussions we're having and searching for information, trying to find answers. That's the way I was. When I first was waking up to the Mandela effect, I wanted to know what was going on. Like I, I really wanted to dig into things. So, and that's what happens. So Right. We all have a different path to walk as far as that goes. Good answer. And Jerry, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Put your back on the so, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't let it cool off for long, did you? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So uh, based on the question, if it's meant to wake humanity up, what happens if it's not able to? Uh, I think the answer is in the question. If it's meant to, it will. I think it's just that simple. What's meant to be will be regardless of what we like. Uh, I call these time locked events. I believe that kind of like Chris's uh, expiration date or wake up date, uh, it's time locked that you will wake up at this time or this will happen that uh, will open your eyes to this. An event that no matter what you do in life, you're going to end up in that spot. So if you're meant to wake up to the effect, you're going to wake up to it. If you're not, you're not, in my opinion. I, I think the answer is in the question. Good answer. Akronos? Yep. Or is Jerry? Oh, go ahead, Shane. Go for it. <laughs> okay. I, I was just going to say, I think uh, with the Mandela effect, you know, it's just one of any number of things that can uh, wake us up. I've seen people that are wide awake and they don't like to look at the Mandela effect. It's sort of scary to them. And, you know, it would kind of get them off of their journey right now. So I don't think it's sort of a litmus test or or. It's, you know, you have to be part of the club 
to be awake or whatever. I think it's just a, a great tool to really see some supernatural stuff is going on, you know, for most people that can really see it happening. It's something that you can't just tell somebody about. It's something they have to actually experience. And when you experience, boy, do you experience it. I mean, I had to go back to the chalkboard and say, man, nothing's like I thought it was, you know? So for me, it was a huge wake up call. I know I hear other people that went through similar things, but it was a near death experience. Or, right. you know, some of the conspiracies that you hear online. I don't want to say anything and get us knocked off or anything. But, you know, there's any number of things that can sort of get us out of our daily grind of going to work and paying our bills and all that to, you know, to really trying to wake up to what's going on beyond our little, you know, world and in within, you know, as well, which uh, for a lot of people, that's where, you know, going outward and seeing all that leads you back within, which is where the real answers are, in my opinion. <laughs> Nice. Love it. And uh, Kronos, so, uh, do you want to chime in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, first off, I do think there is an awakening going on with humanity right now. And I think that Mandela effect is one of the fantastic triggers that help people realize things are not as they seem and start the awakening process. But as Shane said, it's not the only awakening thing. So to answer the person's question of what if they don't get awakened by the Mandela effect? Well, for some people, the Mandela effect won't be what awakens them. It could be a, not, a, a near death experience, it could be ayahuasca. I had one friend who had the awakening process happen during a solar eclipse. They were staring at the solar eclipse, and during the two minutes and 40 seconds, they had a full awakening. So, and this those, yeah. So I think something will awaken people, but then as Terry said, but not all people. Some people are just not going to be awakened. That's true. Not and this. Someone else just uh, asked the question. This is Morris. How do you define awake? I think this question goes with the one we're talking about. So, I'd like to go around this circle again, um, find out what is awake and how does that relate to this? Because if you, it's a good point, if you define awake um you know sometimes people now say someone's woke and then they make fun of it they're like oh woke great because it's a label and as soon as you assume that you know what's going on you pretty much don't know what's going on and i think um the awareness that there's something bigger i think that's a key aspect of awake so the true awakening i think is much deeper than just woke <laughs> any thoughts on that from anyone. So I'll go ahead and grab this one first. The awakening, or what does it mean to be awake? I always say at the end of my shows, uh, whether it's on YouTube or on the radio, I end it with stay awake, but dare to dream. But what does that really mean? It's, it's more than just a catchphrase. Staying awake is being aware of what's around you and being open-minded enough to accept things that are questionable to mainstream belief systems. To be willing to take ideas under your hat, whether you believe them or not, to be willing to open your mind enough to look into things that are fringe or, or more out there than what is considered normal, like the Mandela effect or UFOs or ghosts or whatever the topic may be. Uh, just being willing to have an open mind, I think, would really be being awake. Good answer. That's a good start. Anybody want to add to that? Yeah, I'll I'll add I'll add to that too. To me, well, there's like different levels of being awake. So let's say level zero to ten. Like, so maybe I'm on a level two or something like that. You know, we're in some kind of a process of, of awakening more and more. It's almost like when you're waking up from a deep sleep, you're kind of groggy at the beginning. Like, whoa, where am I? So I feel like I'm at that particular stage. But to me, the basic definition is that you are seeing through the illusion. You're beginning to see things and see the signs that reality is not what you were taught it to be. And this whole situation that we're in, called the global narrative, does a lot to keep us into locked into belief systems with the mass media, you know, with all, things that we're being told, how we're being programmed through watching TV and frequencies and so forth. So to me, it's like, it's just that if you're awoke, you're, you all of a sudden, like, this is not like this is not what I what I was taught it, it to be. So it's the beginning of a process. That's good. 
Yeah, I think it, what's coming to mind as you are talking is I feel like this has been a containment program of sorts, that it's a safe zone, like bumper bowling or like being inside of a playpen when you're a toddler. And when you get to the level of responsibility that you don't need to be in a playpen, then you are free and you're awake. You're aware that you can walk right through that playpen. There's a gate, so forth. Shane, you want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, I think it, it is really helpful to think of it in terms of being awake. It's what we're talking about is really your level of consciousness or how conscious you are of the fact that you're even trying to increase your consciousness. And that's what I think, you know, what Chris was just saying, it's like the beginning of the process, I think, sort of marks um, that woke or being awakened. Um, and then, you know, from there, it's a journey of how much you can wake up and you wake up more and more all the time to different things. And um, but I think there is a process when you're, you're sort of aware of the fact that you're doing it. And I think that's the awakened group. But we all we're all you know, nobody's fully aware of everything, you know what I mean? But we're all waking up more and more. And that's the expanded consciousness or broadening your awareness, you know, but it's all this idea of being asleep or the sleeple as uh, Eileen likes to say, um, people just sort of the NPCs, if you will, the background people, they're sort of just playing out their roles. And, um, you know, and I think any of us can sort of be the background people for other people. So I'm not really saying it's soulless people or whatever, but it's sort of like that. It's like you're on autopilot, right? So, right. I mean, it is a helpful way of looking at it, but to say there's not a soul in there, I don't know about that, but, you know, I, I think in many ways it's like we're sleepwalking, you know, sleepwalkers, right? And then, so at some point you wake up and then that starts the whole process. That's the, that's the term I use in um, reality shifts. I talk about sleepwalking and yeah. being an autopilot, just like cruising. cruising. Yeah. So it's, it's, <laughs> My daughter's know, loving what... that book too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Any other people want to chime in on this one about awake and continuing that? Because I do have another question. This one's from Atsuko Uchida. Atsuko, excuse me. And the question is, human anatomy, Mandela effects, can happen overnight. There's also um, these sort of gradual body changes. There's carbon to crystalline structure. What is the relationship, if any, between these two things? Because, you know, you can have that overnight or you can have a gradual process. And how does that tie together? Any thoughts on that? I have, I have, a, if, thought, I have a thought on that. Yeah. Um, because the anatomy changes are pretty interesting, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yes. like our heart is the placement of it is better instead of being displaced to the left. It's like right. in the center and our internal organs are in our rib cage, you know, et cetera. To, to me, it's almost like upgrades, like things that are happening that are better, which shows that humans are like, I believe I'm going to use a computer phrase here, but we're getting, we're getting close to going to another version. Let's say we're going to go, we're going to ver, human version 8.0 is going to be coming out soon. And our DNA is going to be changing or it's in the process of changing. Like the question said from the carbon based to the crystalline based with the help of the mitochondria and the mitochondria. Like, I don't think they're, I don't think we talk about them enough because they're so, I think it's so important for what's going to be happening into our future. They give us the power. Everything is, energy frequency and vibration and the mitochondria do that. Mm -hmm. So I believe like the Mandela effects that we're exhibiting or we're noticing as far as our anatomy basically are showing how we're on an upgrade path. And I think it's, I think it's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's really cool. Love that answer. Anybody else want to join in on that one? Um, to me, it's, it reminds me of physics. Everything reminds me of physics, but it looks like um, you've got two different things going on. You've got the gradual, which is like the classical view of reality. It's kind of like you're watching it, it sort of smooths. Um, but then the quantum, you bring that in and you can get those instantaneous changes, like what Chris is talking about. Suddenly the heart, I remember it on the left side of the chest, very clearly, because we would say the Pledge of Allegiance in school, put our hand over our heart and the teachers would make it a teaching moment. Your heart, as you know, they would point out, is not exactly in the center of your chest. They would make a big deal out of it. And now, guess what? It is exactly in the center of our chest. <laughs> so that More aligned with the chakra. Yeah. Yes, I love it. And I love the idea that it's an upgrade. So that's very cool. I think people can re resonate with that too. 
And I think one one thing that's interesting, and I, I wanted to mention this just for people that, that love da data and they haven't heard me tell the story before. I had uh, one, my heart was on the left side. I heard about this whole thing. Uh, I had a, a rib that was kind of dipped in on the left side, right above my heart. And I would always worry about that and I'd have pains. And now that I know my heart's moved, it's my lung pains like gas or, or whatever, you know, but I'd always worry about it when my heart was over there. Well, when I discovered the Mandela effect with the heart and my, uh, I checked, I had my son put his head to my chest and he goes, no, it's definitely up here real high in the middle of your chest. I'm like, oh my gosh, my rib, my ribs were symmetrical where they had been actually one side was flat and the other side was normal. They were both now normal. Now here's the important data point to this because, you know, I, I started thinking did I jump into another timeline where my rib was never messed up. You know, I'm starting to think of this from, you know, terms of tr trying to figure it out. My skin, you know how when you sit and you get the little rolls and the little creases that, that are there over time, my rolls still reflect my crooked rib, although my rib is no longer crooked. So that's, to me, I was like, wow, I'm definitely in the same skin, but the ribs got fixed. So it's like my same body, because I know people have talked about scars moving. It's your same body. It's like maybe the, the original injury changed or how that played out. You know what I mean? If you fell on a bike, maybe it was the other side or something. You know what I mean? But I don't know that we're really jumping somewhere else because, like I said, my, skin's re my skin reflected my crooked rib, although my rib was no longer crooked. Yeah. Residue. Right. And um, since we, yeah, go ahead. No, it's just fascinating. That's really interesting. That's crazy, yeah. yeah. And I have a question for Shane from Propagate This Light. Do you think that the year is actually 2012? And if so, why? Mm, that's a good question because I think I actually got the information from uh, an article you sent me, Cynthia, right? <laughs> so yes, maybe you, you might be able to explain it better. I don't, I don't know that, you know, it's accurate. <laughs> I haven't done my own research on it or whatever, but basically don't they take uh, whatever the original before the Gregorian? Like Gre yeah, it's right. The difference in the calendar systems, Gregorian to Julian and when they were calculating the Mayan calendar. So it actually was off like eight and a half years or here we are. Right. <laughs> June 21st, so, 2020. So, so maybe a very good possibility. And it wouldn't be the first time some kind of wild, crazy synchronicity aligned with some of the stuff we've been doing, right, team? Yes. That's no doubt. If Man, the synchronicities with this team are always out of the roof. The 2012 question, if I may uh, grab that real quick. Please, uh, yes. The Julian to Gregorian calendars at the crossover in the 1500s. And when Tole actually looked into this, he uh, suggested that a thousand years was added. But that's a whole nother discussion and topic. But the idea is when we jump from Julian to Gregorian, there was an 11 day differential between the two calendars that they kept out of the Gregorian calendar. So you lost 11 days a year. So this compounds per year over I don't remember how many it was, 250. So I, I don't remember the number of years, so I don't want to get the math wrong, but it adds up to like eight and a half year differential. So by the Julian calendar, technically it would be the year 2012. And I read or heard yesterday, and I don't know how true it is because it is off YouTube. So take it with a grain of salt, guys. I'm not saying this is set in stone, but I heard that the Pope come out and did confirm he believes also that it's wow. 2012. Uh, again, grain of salt, I haven't confirmed that myself. Very good to know. Can, Jerry, can, we, can we, I'm sorry, it, the, the Pope said, what did the Pope say that he believes is 2021 or 2012? 12, 2012. Oh, was the Mayan yes. calendar end, okay. No, the, this is 2012 right now oh. as we sit. Okay. This is 2012. Yeah, and yeah, the Mayan right. calendar end, to be clear, was never the end of the world, is the end of an age or an era. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question. <laughs> we got a question that came in from uh, Boiling Frogs. Are humans time locked? Are humans time locked? I'm not sure I understand what, it, what that well, means. I think it ties in with what you were saying earlier, Chris, that in some ways there's a kind of a containment field around humanity of sorts. Um, some people feel it more than you know, they just have that feeling like like we're kind of locked in a linear time or locked in a way of living. 
locked in some kind of framework, space and time, perhaps. And to, if that's true, is it possible to escape or move through that, I guess would be the corollary question. Yeah, I mean, uh, so when I hear that, I believe that our, our higher consciousness is um, a timeless being, um, so to speak, like no time or definitely is not considered, not linear time is not something normal uh, for other beings at higher levels than us. So time locked, I'm going to probably say, if I'm understanding it right, um, to, to an extent, probably yes, because we seem like we're trapped in linear time like one frame a second but there are concepts you know time travel and how that could be accomplished and all, all the different ways that that works so initially are we time are we time locked maybe but we can move beyond we can we definitely can move beyond that is how, how i would express that and like jerry's talk was really getting into that a lot of examples came up do you want to touch on that jerry wow um <laughs> <laughs> you're back in the hot seat jerry <laughs> time i know right you guys love to burn me up today i saw right i i love it um the, i i need it by my goodness if i'm the father i make i should be able to sit in a hot seat <laughs> uh really though time locked people um so based on the linear time concept yes we do seem to move in a linear time concept i would go back to the time locked events though I don't think we're time locked per se. I think events in our life are time locked. Meeting that special someone that becomes your wife, um, gaining uh, a, a radio show, or gaining a job, or being in the right place at that right time. That just the synchronicities, as we all in the uh, uh, community know. Sorry, I am really getting tired. I apologize, but as we all in the community know, the synchronicities are what we kind of tend to follow, and we end up with a. Uh, it seems to me when we get closer to these time locked events in our lives, the synchronicities seem to speed up more and more, get closer and closer together until we reach that moment. I had something like that, uh, an example of this time locked event idea. The number 420 kept popping up to me, and I know, ha ha ha, guys, <laughs> I know, I get it, but it's not what you think, believe it or not. It actually has nothing, well, somewhat nothing to do with that. Fair enough. So, this number kept showing up more and more frequently for me up to the date of April 20th or 420 when I was asked to come on a, a uh, uh, YouTube show that at the time was very, very big in the community, Dr. Lupo's show. Uh, yes. It was a guest that had dropped out at the moment, and he called me on that day, hey, can you fill in? Sure, absolutely. None of this had been planned. After that, I stopped having that synchronicity of the 420 number. Every now and then it still pops up, don't get me wrong, but not like it was leading up to that moment. So that's what I would have considered a time-locked event. The person dropped out. He called me. I was able to get off of work that particular evening early and, and make that uh, panel discussion. That was meant to happen. That moment was being, being lead, led up to, to meant to happen. Uh, are we time locked in linear time? Yes, we have to experience time one second at a time, generally speaking. Some of us, we, some of you guys tend to jump around hours at a time. I don't, I ain't quite figured out how the trick to that works yet, but <laughs> generally speaking, we are literally locked, but time locked events, I think, happen that are meant to happen and to, to shorten the answer. I apologize for rambling for five minutes no. no that's so cool <laughs> actually in the comments we're hearing boiling frogs is pointing out lupo is awesome i totally agree that's how i met money bags and my, uh, his son evan matreya jr well i didn't meet them but you know they were there and that's very meaningful to me too so it's interesting that you i love your spin on time lock and putting such a positive angle on it brilliant uh, we've got a question that's a little bit different now. This is Desert Mariposa. Anybody want to take this one? Does the food we eat make a difference? And what is the best thing to eat? I'm assuming this would be for Mandela effects or getting the benefit in, in all those senses. Anybody want to pick this one up? I will go ahead and grab this one first since you guys love to throw me in it. I'll just go ahead and get it out of the way right now. <laughs> right now. Uh, seriously, um, 
this said, understand when I say this, I am not a medical doctor. I have no ability to give medical advice. Any advice I do give is personal advice only and is not considered to be medical advice given by me or IMEC. That said, uh, we have found, me and some uh, researchers have found that after shifts occur, agreed upon shifts by the community is what I mean, people have found that they crave peanut butter and magnesium rich foods in general. So I would say keeping the magnesium up would help. It's been uh, our experience that we haven't had a lot of medical data to fully back this yet. But uh, from personal anecdotes, it's been the experience that the magnesium is taken out of the body at a shift for whatever reason. Uh, I can't explain the triggers or abilities behind this. Again, I'm not a medical doctor, but I can tell you that it's been the experience of the community that magnesium and magnesium rich foods is definitely something to keep up on in this researcher's opinion only. That's interesting because I actually uh, have to take uh, magnesium supplements because I'll get heart palpitations and it generally seems like they do happen around shifts. So that would uh, totally align with what you're saying. You know, and I hear that with other people in the community, lots of heart palpitations this week for whatever reason, but that could be from low magnesium. That actually can be heard. from low magnesium. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Akronos. I, I, I haven't heard any of that, but uh, for some weird reason, twice in the last week, I've craved peanut butter, and I, I just had to eat peanut butter twice in the last week, and I haven't eaten peanut butter in two years. <laughs> well, that's, that's cool. interesting. I've got a question that came in from Propagate This Light for Shane. Do you think spiritual abilities heighten um, greater, uh, they develop and get stronger after an out-of-body experience? And if so, why would that be? So mm. spiritual abilities increasing after an out-of-body experience. I definitely feel like, um, from my experience, it, it definitely seems like everything you're experiencing along your journey kind of feeds off of each other and you get synchronicities and it's all connected um, from my experience. So yeah, I've noticed that since I started doing BQH mm. sessions with people, that's really helped me increase just talking to people on my channel and hearing their experiences and just hearing what's happened to people. Just simply hearing people's stories really broadens your perspective and, and your awareness about what's even possible. And then as a result of knowing these things are possible, you begin to experience things yourself. So yeah, I think it all feeds off of itself, whether it's an OBE or hearing about someone's OBE or anything. I think it's all, you know, a well-oiled machine, basically. Excellent. And anybody else want to answer that question? It's fine. I know it was directed at Shane, but feel free. Like if you wanted to jump in. I was, I was going to say that um, uh, uh, near death experiences, uh, particularly mm -hmm. also from what I've heard really amplify things because you have an opportunity to meld more with your higher consciousness or, or whatever that is. But I, I've heard a lot from people that have had near death experiences that that also mark landmarks their spiritual development now catalyst could, could you repeat the question please just to make sure i understand the question okay it was um do you think the spiritual abilities heighten after an out-of-body experience if so why so i can definitely answer that from the research that i've done and the as I was given in the talk earlier, and my green screen is trying to eat me, the dimensions are merging. It's not good, guys. We're really having an effect here. <laughs> I've been noticing that. <laughs> so has the chat, actually. Uh, they said I'm moving in between dimensions. They may be right, actually. Well, you remember uh, the question you got earlier with your talk is what happens when you're you know out of your body and a shift happens. And I think that's the answer right there. Your I think we're seeing what happens right now. Right. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, in my research, the OBE and NDEs do cause spiritual awakenings or spiritual, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I, I don't even like using the word awarenesses, I guess you would say. So why would this be the case? When you go out of body, you suddenly have learned a lot of things in that instant. Number one, you are not your body. Number two, there's a spirit, and that leads in the, those assumptions themselves, or knowing that leads to a whole implication or list of implications. Like the soul is real, the spirit's real, that means the spirit world has to be real, 
that means everything when it deals with spirituality has to be real. You know, it really leads to a lot of implications in a very simple thing. If you want to call OBE a simple thing. NDE was mentioned a moment ago also. And as I mentioned in my talk, we have savant syndrome, among other things that have been experienced from people who have NDEs. And my father had one thing. He did not have an NDE. But he had a, a, a uh, um, symptom that most NDE people have, and that is the electricity in the body going kind of haywire. He, my dad could not wear a watch with a battery. It would stop within two minutes and drain the battery instantly. And people who have had near-death th experiences have had this uh, um, happen to them, them and their body. Um, and this has been documented across a lot of cases. And watches run backwards. I've seen that one too. I, I have friends really? that this happens. Yes. <laughs> oh, I've never yes. heard of that my, one. My, That's interesting. <laughs> well, my mom actually worked in admitting in the hospital all you know my life growing up or whatever, and she said that when people would pass away, I'm not sure what kind of watches, but I guess their spirit passing through the watch would make it just stop. So a lot of them they had the time of death just because I think it might have been the old wind up watches, but. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, you know, because I don't think you hear about that too much anymore. Cool. So did we want to try um, the Acronos test with uh, Shane? Did you, do you have it set up? Do you want to give it a go? Um, Shane was talking oh, about actually, before this. Actually, it, it might be better if Acronos shares his screen and opens it because he, okay. he knows how to he knows how to navigate it better. So, yeah, so just, I can explain it really quick. We were just thinking it, that. Yeah. Um, and it kind of serves two purposes because, you know, we can kind of see the interface and how it works or whatever. But um, I was just discussing having group names to where you can, uh, you know, try using his software as a group. And I could use it with, uh, you know, the UOTF group. But we're all here now and maybe we can intend for something. Is that possible? Or does that take too long to make a, a group name? I'm at group, uh, Acronos. We could do it separately if it's too complicated right now. Are you there, Akronis? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can make a group right now. We could, uh, yeah, we could uh, create a new account right this moment. Okay. And while he's doing that, Jerry, do you want to announce winners of the questions? We could be wrapping that part up and then close with this little demo and then go on to the surprise. <laughs> Well, actually, I would need a couple minutes in order okay. to do that. And I would need the team backstage. So uh, ah. what we could do after this is take a little break. And then we can come back with the big surprises at the end. Okay. Did we? Uh, so we got to all of the questions then? Those are the ones that had my name on it. I'm doing the best I can. And forgive me, anyone, if I've missed a question. Right. Um, this is... Maybe Shane can help me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been looking over here, and um, are they supposed to? Are they putting them in caps or just are they just um, mixed up? Usually, they would tag my name, but uh, or just say question at the beginning. We're just looking in the chat now. Oh, it looks like Eileen has a question. Um, wonder if Universal was oh, maybe not. Sometimes there's discussion going between people, so I'm doing my best to pull the questions out that are intended for. Those of us here, the chat's great. There's so much conversation going on. It's very active. Really love it. Are we ready, Acronis? How are we doing? Not quite. One, one, one moment. Okay, no problem. What about another question? Well, those are the white main ones that we've been getting so far. But I can go ahead and create questions. I got you. one. I got okay. one. Do zombies have near life experiences? <laughs> That was Morris in the chat. I like that. <laughs> Very cute. <laughs> well, one thing I didn't really answer with a question for all of us about the Mandela effect meant to raise consciousness and what happens if the majority of the world never awakens. I think one interesting observation that I've noticed is with the Myers-Briggs inventor interest inventory the type of people that experience the Mandela effect tend to be intuitive feelers. So it's a very specific subset that's like the 1% the of the population type people. Like I'm an INFJ, that's 1% of the population. When we went to Idaho, we were thrilled. I was thrilled to notice that the majority of the people in the room were intuitive feelers. That's highly unusual because really typically- Because that's a minority. It's, yeah. it's a huge minority. I mean, it's a tiny minority, but then when you get together people who experience this phenomenon, 
then you're pretty much selecting for intuitive feelers primarily. Not everybody, but it's it's just a tendency. So it doesn't mean it that you have to be an intuitive feeler to notice Mandela effects, but that tends to be the it's like seventy percent of the Mandela effects are observed by twenty something percent of the population. So I think what's happening is we're gradually increasing the experiencers and we're getting that hundredth monkey uh, effect that Jerry was talking about simply by hitting a tipping point with some of the population experiencing a phenomenon that has <clears throat> really wide sweeping effects, sometimes much greater than um, even people who think they aren't experiencing it might realize. So that, that's been something that we haven't really touched on yet in this conference, but a lot of times people, oh yeah. <laughs> well, but you, are you ready? I, I wanted to tell you something. You took the word <laughs> right out of my mouth because you know, on some levels, there there is evidence that shows that, you know, you can hit this sort of the 1% rule, I guess it is, where, you know, it's sort of everyone else is along for the ride and 1% starts controlling, you know, yes, and it's just yes. everybody else just kind of goes along for the ride. And then there's this huge jump. So technically, yes. they didn't need to. And they always think the Rainbow Mountains are always there. You know, they're like, they've always been there. And they just kind of get pulled along. <laughs> If I may jump in real quick, the tipping point of society is 10%. Oh, okay. And you know what? We hit that point in meditation in the United States not too long ago. Pretty much dovetails with the huge influx and increase in Mandela effect experiences. It doesn't, it, it doesn't mean causation, but there's a huge correlation. And I think Akronos is ready. Are you ready, Akronos? So, Kronos, yeah. I was thinking, um, you know, with a group like that, it, it wouldn't be good to, like, pick the ball because, you know, we'd have to try to get everybody. So, I guess the ones, which ones, like, can we intend for the higher number? There was a few that um, we could do as a group. I, I would say pick a number. That would be the one that I've considered doing on a live stream many times myself. That way, we're all concentrating on focusing on one specific number. Like a three-digit number? or Two-digit, one-digit, yeah. three-digit. Do you want the chat? Zero and five hundred. Are we right. asking the chat to participate too, right? So, what do we want the chat to do? Yeah, we're all going to focus on the same number, correct? All right. Do we what want to? You guys think? Um, do we want to make my screen uh, presentable? Yeah. Can we go full screen? Heather? I say. Uh, yeah. I suggest in uh, a group vote if you like. I suggest four, four, four. Sounds okay. good. That's good. We'll see if we can get this full screen um, for, do you know how to do the share, Rekronos? Just do your share your screen. And then once you've done that, then Heather can make it full screen. Pretty, much, pretty sure. Yeah. Should be right there on your Zoom, just the share screen. All righty. And for those of us who are in the chat and all of us who are participating, and those of you who are watching it later in time, you can't have a retrocausal effect. We can affect the past. So if you're watching this in the future and you want to help, join in with us. Our number is 444. We are choosing that now. So you can go ahead and start doing some slow, deep, steady breathing. Really relax. Actually, Feel it, your muscles relaxing. Go ahead, Rakranos. Uh, right now, uh, when I try to share the screen, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. Mm. Okay. Host, can you re-enable that? Give behind the scenes one moment, guys. Our technical director back there will let us know. But we can get ready in the meantime. We can just go ahead and yeah. just Hang keep relaxing. One second, guys. If you want to keep chatting, and I'll, I'll take a look at yeah. that right now. So we're going to go ahead and get ready for this. So go ahead and just uh, wherever you are, just as long as you're not operating heavy machinery, you can go ahead and close your eyes and start doing some lower abdominal breathing. Just relaxing all the muscles in your body. It's feeling that you're joining together with your heart to all of us. Feeling the love and the joy that we have in sharing together. And it'll be fun to see what kind of effects we can have. We're just going to relax and feel like we're getting deeper into a state of meditative awareness and energy. Just feeling relaxed and energized at the same time. If you want, you can pay attention to your breathing and slow it down so it's nice and deep and steady and slow. And breathe to your lower abdomen nice and slowly. And we've chosen the number four, four, four as our focus. 
and just feeling like we're joining together, all of our hearts together. Recognizing that we do want to see some cool effects, but whatever happens is fine. Just, I love to ask how good can it get and trust and have faith that we're going to find out and it'll make sense one way or the other. I'm just feeling relaxed, calm. Anything else you want to add to Kronos for what we're doing? That would be great. Well, I'm, all, I'm almost wondering if I should start one now uh, before we have the visual, and then I can do another one after uh, we can share a screen. Fine. Yeah, I can do one right now. So we're going to go ahead and just focus on 444. 444. I'm going to have it man four, four, uh, manifest four. 250 times. That's our goal. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one, starting. And for those of us that haven't done this before, Kronos, you can let us know what's going on, just for those who have no idea what's going on. Okay. So every second, um, a thousand numbers are being generated. Right now, the numbers is tracking how many times those numbers are the number 444. Uh, each second between negative 500 to positive 500 is being generated and zero is excluded. So there's exactly a one in a thousand chance for every single number. Statistically, every number should show up once per second. Of course, since they're all randomly generated, uh, some seconds you might have your number show up five times or six times. Other seconds you might have it show up zero times. Um, and the question is, can you burst and think on the number and have it show up faster than once per second. That's the goal. And what this does is it tracks how fast does it show. Um, what I've noticed is when I'm doing this, if I get a phone call in the middle and uh, I track when that call came in, at the end it tells you exactly how, how often it, it triggered and what millisecond each number triggered. And I'll notice that during the time I had the phone call, it will be much less than during the times that I'm focusing. So and what percentage are we at right now? Well, I had to log out and log back in. Um, and so it didn't start until uh, a short bit ago. We're at 96 right now, 97, 99, 100, 102. It's jumping pretty quick. 107, 109. I wish you guys could see this. We're at 44.9%. Keep concentrating, everybody. Four, 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 four. Not much longer. It's interesting, it was zooming and then it had no numbers for a good three seconds. Now it's going back up again, faster and faster. 154, 157, finished. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Let's find out our Yay. score. Now, we did have a bit of a restart in the beginning is why it took longer. Normally, I don't think it would have quite taken that long, especially with the group. So, uh, hey, Kronos. It's on you. All right. It, we ended up finishing in 247 seconds. Statistically average, it would have been 250 seconds. So we were faster than average. Um, and total score, uh, it came to 200. Let me see. Total score, 1,525. Nice. So let me tell you, in comparison, the first time Equinos showed me this, 
It was the last day of the last conference. My mind is in 90 different places. I'm doing 50 different things. And he shows me this. And I gladly granted him the, the time for him to show me. And he said, here, let's try it. Okay. So I tried it again. I'm very distracted. I got a zero, straight, absolute zero. You can do that. I did it first time. So Akronos goes, here, let me show you. He sits down and gets a 400 straight off the top. So, yes, it does make a difference with practice also. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to seeing your scores during the contest this week. Dark Wolf, I want, to, I want to see you get some really good scores. I know you got it in you. Well, I appreciate that. Since you mentioned that, ladies and gentlemen, I found out earlier that I am no longer the king of intuition challenge. It is now someone named Kim. I'm assuming you know which Kim you are uh, because I don't. But congratulations. You have knocked me off that pedestal for the moment. I will be trying to get back on there. <laughs> awesome. Any any other uh, conversation you want to have? Because what we I think we want to wrap this up so we can get those winners and move on to the get this special surprise. surprise. Absolutely. Yeah. So thanks for all of the demonstration that you did, Akronos. That was awesome. Really glad to have the answers from Shane and Chris and you, Jerry. It's been a wonderful day, first day of the conference so far. So we're going to take a little break here to get the winners. Is there anything you want to say, Jerry, before we? wrap up guys give us about 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes we will be right back we've got to go behind the scenes we got to do some calculate and do some arguing and <laughs> i mean discussing and find out who has the best questions so let me tell you this is not going to be easy you guys hammered us with some amazing questions today keep them coming we have a full week of this i'm loving it we've had an amazing start thank you cynthia say thank you chris for moderating all day you guys have done an amazing job as moderators today from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for taking this day on it's been absolutely fun shane thank you for jumping on the panel with us the first time we've heard from you today so we very very much appreciate you Coming up and hanging out with us in Akronos, of course. A wonderful presentation. He has that prize going, guys. Get on that ThetaStream.app and uh, make sure you, you're practicing. Practice does make perfect when it comes to this. And that's all I got to say, guys. Give us a couple minutes. Let's go behind the scenes, and we'll come back with some winners. And we'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys. Welcome back to the 2020 International Mandela Effect Conference and the closing of the conference. But don't worry, guys. It's not over. It's only getting to the end of day one. We have a special, very special release video coming out tomorrow. And for that, I've kept here with me, Mr. Christopher Anatra. Could you please explain to us, Chris, uh, what this is about and, and why it's so special? Yeah, so when I was preparing my uh, presentation that, that's going to be shown on Tuesday about timeline paradoxes, I was doing all this research about NASA and so forth, and I had an experience that I didn't have any idea I was going to have, and it cr caused me to create kind of like another presentation, really a video on its own that has to do with Father's Day. So the timing was perfect, Sunday's Father's Day. Sunday's the Ring of Fire ang annular eclipse, um, summer solstice. You know, as we talked about before, some some feel it's the true um, end of the Mayan calendar, marking the beginning of a new age. So, so tomorrow is a kind of an interesting day. But while I was um, creating my presentation, I had a experience and visitation by a deceased astronaut. But it wasn't from the space shuttle Challenger crew, which I was doing my timeline paradox thing about. It was from another um, uh, astronaut that died in the 60s at, at Cape Canaveral. Actually, there are three of them all together. So um, it's going to air tomorrow at, at 4 p.m. on the IMAC channel. So hopefully everyone here is subscribed. If not, please subscribe. So you get the um, can, can we have some clarity there? 4 p.m. what time zone? Thank you. Um, Eastern time zone. So 4 p.m. Eastern time zone. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's uh, the the video runs about forty nine minutes, so and it's just packed with information, and it goes off in a direction that I don't think people are expecting that it would go off on, but I think it's it's pretty special. I think it's one of the 
um, to me, it's like one of the better, better videos that I made. And especially because it wasn't planned, it just came about and it flowed and things were happening to me. Like as an example, I was, um, doing this research and I'm at my house getting ready to go to bed. I look at my clock. It says 11, 11, you know, the angel hour. And then my phone starts going off in another room and I'm like, what's going on with my phone? And I, I listen to it. And it's talking about, um, Purdue university presents the Gus Grissom story. And I'm like, what is this astronaut Gus Grissom? And so that's how these things progress. It started off with that. So it's, it's pretty special. So I just want to invite everyone to give it a watch and, you might be you might be surprised at what what I reveal and that what I the revelation that I that I uncover in that video. So just wanted to say a little bit about that. Well, we've had many revelations uncovered today, my friend. We cannot wait for that tomorrow. I am telling you, I'm as, as excited as the rest of the audience. I'm sure is. So thank you, Chris, for doing that for us for that special Father's Day video. I'm sure every one of us will will appreciate that. Thank you, Jerry. Thank All you, right. sir. I'm going um, to sign off. And I can't wait for the surprise. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple announcements to make. Of course, I promised you at the beginning of this show that we would have a contest running every day for two winners for a copy of Cynthia Sue Larson's book, Reality Shifts. Uh, consciousness changing matter. Lord help me, I can't remember the the subtitle. But reality shifts is the uh, main title of the Cynthia Sue Larson book. As a matter of fact, I actually have that right here. When consciousness changes the physical world, you will each receive a copy of this book. Now, who are the winners for today? That is a really, really good question, ladies and gentlemen. The first winner for today is the question about C60 and carbon opposed or carbon crystallization opposed to instantaneous body changes. That was Atsuko or Atsuko. I'm sorry. Atsuko is the name you pronounce the way you pronounce that name. Atsuko get with us. Uh, uh, send us an email team at IMEC dot world team at I M E C dot W O R L D. Congratulations. You are the first winner of the contest of the first day, the first winner of the entire conference. So congratulations, the second winner. And if you guys haven't guessed it by now, we have joked about this uh, uh, question ever since it came in, uh, only because it was such an amazing question. And that was the question about the OBE at the time of a shift. That was asked by the ripping rabbit hole, Mr. AJ. Congratulations. Go ahead and send us a email with your uh, mailing address uh, to the team at imec.world so we can get that on its way. We uh, at imec, before everything started off this week, a couple months ago, about a month and a half ago, I'd say, maybe a little less, we put out a call to the entire Mandela Effect community, and we asked them to send us a small clip about how they felt about the Mandela Effect or just their thoughts, just a small 10-second clip. Well, we've had a very special young man, Mr. Evan Jr., Moneybag's son, has put together an amazing, and when I say amazing, I cannot stress this enough, guys, an amazing Mandela montage that we will play just as soon as my mouth closes for the last time tonight. But before we do that, there's something for you guys to look forward to here in about five minutes. We will be playing that montage and this montage again is from all random people of the community this is more than just us here at imac this is more than just the speakers involved this is everybody in the community who was willing to send in their piece they are in this montage i sadly was not able to but that's okay because my voice will be heard on this conference enough you don't need to hear it one more time in a montage i'm sure is actually probably your reprieve from hearing my voice for a couple minutes and i say that joke of course, unless you don't enjoy my voice, then sorry, just kidding. Anyway, guys, I'm rambling, so let me get to the meat of the things. We know tomorrow we have Moon Angel coming out by Christopher Anatra. It will be on the International Mandela Effect YouTube page. Guys, please come back on tomorrow. Check that out. Share that out in social medias. Share it out with everybody. Let them know that this event is going on. And Monday, the uh, schedule for Monday looks to be 
that we are going to have me pulling up the schedule for Monday because it's not up yet. The schedule for Monday, we're going to have Moneybags himself, Mr. Evan Matreya, as our first talk. Then we'll have Eileen Colts, one Eileen Colts of uh, the Eileen Colts YouTube channel, a former TV, or I'm sorry, radio news journalist. We are really looking forward to that one also. And then Mr. Shane Robinson of Unbiased and on the Fence. You heard from him on the panel tonight. He will be giving his talk on Monday. So you guys do not want to to miss this make sure you tune in monday at uh, the same time but check the imec.world site for the times that we will be going live and uh ladies and gentlemen without any further ado thank you so very much for being here at the grand opening and kickoff of the 2020 international mandela effect conference it is has been absolutely 100 percent top-notch incredible and has only been that way because of every last one of you who has interacted today and been involved and we hope continues to be involved to the rest of this event so ladies and gentlemen i promised you a mandela montage and a mandela montage you will get so i'm jerry hicks and on behalf of the board of directors and the sponsors which i must shout out one last time the ripping rabbit hole common sense radio the dream seven radio dream visions seven i'm sorry the dream visions seven radio network the conscious life news higher journeys with alexis brooks and the kingdom of Nye Radio Show. We are proud to have every last one of you guys on board. So, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our sponsors, on behalf of our board of directors, and on behalf of our team uh, behind the scenes and in front of the scenes, we thank you for being here. We hope to see you again both tomorrow and on Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending the first day of the International Mandela Effect Conference 2020. Until Monday, bye, everybody.